Let me start with Sundak. How do you describe what he did through his art, the, the, the world, the aura that he created? Well, I think uh, Sendak really, it, it was, you know, the, looking at his books as a child, the art was like a little bit dangerous in some ways, and it was sophisticated, but beautiful and accessible. It really, it felt like actual art, you know, um, that you were entering into this whole other realm, this whole other world. And something that I learned later on after I had started making books was that he never really thought that he made children's books. He always just made books and somebody else said they're for children. And that it was a huge moment in my career because I felt the same way and had never realized that he had said that. What's the distinction between children's book versus picture book? Uh, well, a picture book is a book that I, I would say the lion's share of the narrative is told using images, um, using visual literacy, uh, and, a, and I guess a children's book is, is one that's specifically designed for children. And how do you find his work, of course he's known for, for the response and resonance that he's had in children, but mm. how does, how is the work so much more universal? I think the work is so much more universal because he isn't trying to pander to anyone at all. Uh, he's just simply being an artist in the truest sense, which is he's, following his own path down a, down a rabbit hole and seeing where that goes and just the act of, I think, exposure and vulnerability to his thoughts and whims and processes, there's, there's an incredible honesty in that that other people can attribute themselves to, can let themselves in, see, notice the, the, the rhythms of their own life. And I think whenever you set out to make art that's for somebody else or for a, a, a particular audience, you start to lose that. How long has he been part of your DNA? Uh, well, you know, there's books that I remember from childhood and, and Where the Wild Things Are is one that definitely stands out as is in the, the Night Kitchen. I think there is a sense of colour and layout and I suppose that, that scale and, and composition is, there, there's a, there's, it suggests a much bigger world than is possibly there whenever you close the book. And so I think that's been present in my work and only when I really, as an adult, look back and was like, oh, maybe that's where that came from. So as you look at your work and is there a fibre of his, his sensibility that you see? And how does it exist within your work, would you say? Um, without having realised that the, the motivation is, is quite similar. I, I suppose I'm willing to go to some of the places that feel a bit riskier than, uh, than maybe I would be had I not known of the existence of his work. But, you know, the, I think the, our worlds are quite different in, in that sense. And, and the, I think my work is a little more hopeful perhaps than his and a little less poetically abstract. Hopeful, uh, and I, but I was reading uh, you grew up observing the troubles and mm -hmm. its impact mm -hmm. uh, in your community, in your, your country. So how, where does the optimism come from? Well, really, you know, the, in Northern Ireland, we, there's a, a shared sense of understanding about the uniqueness of our sense of humour. And, and I think that comes from, because we just find humour in everything. And, and if you don't laugh, you cry, and nobody really wants to cry. So there, there is just that, the, the humour that comes from it, a bleak humour. But I think the hope comes from just having witnessed all this atrocity, uh, all this violence, just the, the I, I suppose, the the poignant, tragic, self-repeating cycle of it, uh, even in spite of all that, I've never met anybody who actually wants to be a bad person. And when I realised, when I lived in New York and looking back and that the riots had started again or there was, there was trouble and you see this news footage and they were all kids, uh, you know, like 10, 12, 14, 16 years old and it was like, what do they know about this 800 years of this? This, what was deemed a religious struggle became a class struggle and now has become an identity struggle. What do they know about it? They're just being told a story. And one of the most important, uh, I suppose, eureka moments of my life was that you can change the story that you tell. And so that's why I'm, I'm filled with hope because I think fundamentally all people are good people. And we just need to get behind single, simpler, better stories. And is that something you actively hope and want to do? Yes, with it is your work? something that I actively hope and that I, uh, a lot of my work uh, goes towards. R having talked to people all across this country, um, regardless of, of their, their backgrounds or their beliefs, uh, and the, having witnessed the, the ebbs and flows and trends of Northern Irish politics, it's, you start to see some of the same patterns, which is that oftentimes people don't necessarily know who they are, they just know who they're not. So it's the, uh, the idea of, of an existence of an enemy becomes a, one of the single greatest, uh, I, I suppose, identity factors for, for people.
And what I've come to realize is that all people just seem to want the same four things, which is safety, dignity, purpose, and community. And those shouldn't be that hard to accomplish. I mean, it's, it's safety, community, they're so so prevalent in your yeah. work. And I think I've, I've always thought, that, like uh, Maurice Sendak, that if you can say something simply enough, you can't really disagree with it. Where does color come into that? You know, I failed color blindness test in school. <laughs> so um, I've just always had an, an eye for what I think works together. And half the time that comes accidentally, you know, like the uh, pile of papers in your desk and you set something on top of something like, ooh, that works. Um, and just through trial and error. But the, with I try to stay away from obvious color combinations, especially when dealing with outer space and, and planet Earth and things like that, because I think we intuitively read color in a, in a way that is sort of, that's pre-language. I'm remembering correctly, we sort of this yellowish glow for the facade, for the, the gardener, that engenders just this, ca warmth. this calmness, yeah. Yeah, just warmth. And that's the only little spot of light in the very bottom of the facade. And the piece is called Universes. And as we know, there's only one universe, but in, in this piece, there's two, because there's the, the night sky that's behind the house that sort of extends up and out of frame. And, and then there's the universe inside her head as she's reading that book. Finally, what about scale here? People are so used to the intimacy of your work, being able to hold it and experience mm. it and live with it. And at The Gardener, we find this epic mural. Yeah. The work that I've made for the books, because I've always had one foot in the fine art world and made these large paintings. And, and over the last few years, I've been making large sculptures that are kind of poetic observations about the scale of Earth in its the context of our of our near cosmos, so just even the distance to the moon and then spelling out, you know, so here's an accurate size of the moon to the earth, here's how far away it really is and uh, and just writing things like people live here on all of the countries as opposed to their actual names. But so the, I have been working large for a while, but for the books I always work in actual size because I want it to feel like it's, you, you know, you're, you're really there and part of that process so the brush strokes look like they're real, they look like they're you know, haven't been enlarged or shrank in any way. Um, but yeah, I think this this is probably the biggest piece of work that's ever existed of mine. And does the encounter change, do you think, when it's that large? Uh, I personally wanted to get like really up close to it and, and have a look, but it's, you know, the tie up and you, and you, you can't quite. Um, I don't think it does, and that's the funny thing. I think it's like, this still feels like it's it's all encompassing in, in the way that I hope the, the smaller work does. So, you know, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask. Ask somebody who's enjoyed the books and then what they think of seeing it in that scale.